Frank Kai, a frequent commenter on this channel, is spending a month here in Pittsburgh training with me. Whenever we see a great case, Frank tells me to make a lecture about it, so in the comments section, tell Frank what he should be looking out for. This is the first of Frank's great cases. What is the first thing you think of when you see this image? This bilobed mass right here. The first thing that snaps into my mind is an arachnoid cyst going through the porous trigeminus and enlarging Meckel's cave. That's what I think of when I see something that looks like CSF, very uniform in this location. Okay, what's the first thing that goes into your mind when you see this picture? Ignore the previous one. What's the first thing that snaps into your mind? Well, for me, this looks a lot like a schwannoma, right? It's, it's along the course of the trigeminal nerve. It's enlarging Meckel's cave, but it's also got a prepontine component. And on this post-contrast series, it has a lot of heterogeneous enhancement, right? That's pretty characteristic for a trigeminal schwannoma. Okay, ignore the last couple of images and tell me what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you see all these little bright dots on this T1-weighted parasagittal image. For me, the first thing that pops into my mind is that we're looking at the Fox cerebri and we're seeing small areas of ossification. Maybe this picture will help to tie it all together. Here is the bilobed mass and we can see on this pre-contrast T1 weighted image that it is bright. Let me show you all four of these pictures together now. Can you tie it all together? Can you figure out what looks like an arachnoid cyst on this image, looks like a schwannoma on this image, looks like the Fox cerebri on this image, and has a pretty unique appearance on this image? Well, there's not a lot of things that are intrinsically bright on T1-weighted imaging. Fat is intrinsically bright, hemorrhage is intrinsically bright, a proteinaceous cyst might become uh, intrinsically bright, but of those, there's only one thing that disappears on a fat-suppressed image, and that's fat. So you know this thing contains fat. This is not in the Fox cerebri. This is a leptomeningeal spread of disease, and these tiny fat lobules are in a leptomeningeal pattern. This is a ruptured dermoid. All right, so here's the dermoid. Here it ruptured and spread throughout the leptomeningeal space, and we know that it contains fat, as most dermoids do. It's important in this case not only to make the right diagnosis, but also to indicate that the dermoid has ruptured because it can induce a chemical meningitis.